Welcome once again. Right now we're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 1. The letter to the Hebrews. Notice it says here, the letter to the Hebrews, not Paul's letter to the Hebrews. I know that some Bibles say Paul's letter to the Hebrews, and some say the letter to the Hebrews. It is much more accurate to say the letter to the Hebrews, because really, honestly, no scholar knows exactly who the author is. If you haven't seen my introduction to the book of Hebrews, check that out. God, having in the past spoken to the fathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways, has at the end of these days spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also made the worlds. Isn't this amazing? that Jesus is identified as being in existence and also actually active in the creation of the worlds. His Son is the radiance of His glory, the very image of His substance, and upholding all things by the word of His power, who, when He had by Himself purified us of our sins, sat down on the right hand of the Majesty on high. I want to draw your attention to the word purify here. In the original Greek, it means to wash, okay? Not to cover. It's not like God just covers your sins or just ignores your sins. No, washes your sins away. God has the ability to break the power of sin over your life, to wash away your sin. Not leave the dirt there and just cover it up, but wash it away. Having become as much better than the angels, as the more excellent name he has inherited is better than theirs. For to which of the angels did he say at any time, You are my son, today I have become your father. And again, I will be to him a father, and he will be to me a son. When he again brings in the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds. That word winds also means spirits. And his servants, a flame of fire. But of the Son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and ever. The scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God your God has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Do you love righteousness and hate iniquity? And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish, but you continue. They will all grow old like a garment does. You will roll them up like a mantle, and they will be changed. But you are the same your years won't fail. But which of the angels has he told at any time, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies the footstool of your feet? Somebody asked me once, what are those little purple stars you got there on the screen? What does those stars mean? Well, each one of these purple stars you see are references to so-called Old Testament passages. Let's look at them quickly. Here are all the references. Psalm, 2 Samuel, 1 Chronicles, Deuteronomy, several more Psalms references. So here, just in the first chapter of Hebrews, we have eight so-called Old Testament references. Eight references. Now, I want to bring to your attention again that the New Testament first century church didn't have the New Testament Bible, okay? They preached the entire gospel out of what we call the Old Testament, Think about that for a second. The true New Testament church can preach the gospel of Jesus Christ exclusively from the Old Testament. I want to draw your attention to the last verse of this chapter, verse 14. Aren't they all, speaking about angels, serving spirits sent out to do service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? Let me read that sentence one more time. Aren't they all, that's speaking about angels again, serving spirits sent out to do service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation? This verse is actually from the Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha. How do I know this? 
Well, we know that the Apocrypha and Pseudepigrapha, much of it existed in the days when the book of Hebrews was written. Not only did those books exist, but they were accepted and well known amongst many people. So in this verse, it says that angels are sent as ministering spirits to those who will inherit salvation. Let's look at the book of Enoch, chapter 40. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 40, verse 8. After this, I besought the angel of peace, who proceeded with me to explain all that was concealed. I said to him, Who are those whom I have seen on the four sides, and whose words I have heard and written down? He replied, The first is the merciful, the patient, the holy Michael. The second is he who presides over every suffering and every affliction of the sons of men, the holy Raphael. The third, who presides over all that is powerful, is Gabriel. And the fourth, who presides over repentance and the hope of those who will inherit eternal life, is Phanuel. These are the four angels of the Most High God and their four voices, which at that time I heard. That clearly says that we have Fenuel, if not the other angels, that are sent to minister to those who will inherit salvation, to those who will inherit eternal life. The book of Enoch is also full of allusions to this very same principle. Too much to go through in just this one video. But also we have the book of Tobit, which is in the Apocrypha. Now, I can't point out any specific verse in the book of Tobit because the whole story is about an angel of God that is sent to minister unto Tobit. Until next time, seek God with all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.